it burns and releases carbon into the atmosphere. So we have to be, the bottom line, and I think this is back to the blue dog principle of diversity of fuels, we shouldn't be so quick to take energy sources available domestically off the table. We shouldn't be reluctant to reevaluate long-held positions on a particular energy source in light of new technologies that can help us extract resources in an environmentally sound way, new technologies that can facilitate wind energy development, biofuels development, a whole host of other technologies on the electricity side, whether it's clean burning coal, hydroelectric power, solar power, and of course on the transportation side with vehicle technology and engine technology for flex fuel vehicles and hybrid vehicles. Already this Congress, we've taken a number of important steps, uh, not the least of which is the renewable fuel standard that we passed in December that by many analysis shows that is moderating the price of gasoline at 15 percent less than it would be otherwise without that increased biofuels production. So bio, biofuels production is saving consumers money at the pump. But obviously, we know that consumers are suffering with $4 gasoline, higher in some areas. We know that there are ways that we need to get at speculation that may exist in the marketplace for oil and other commodities. That we have the weak dollar that my colleague from Utah pointed out at the top of the hour that is affecting the increased costs per barrel of oil. We, in addition to the renewable fuel standard, passed CAFE standards that go to the heart of conservation and energy efficiency and the additional technologies that we know exist to help maximize those efforts. We have passed legislation to ensure that the President no longer adds oil to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and we know that that Strategic Petroleum Reserve is yet another tool that we need to consider using as we move forward to give some relief to consumers at the pump. We passed a bill that looks at the issue of how many leases are currently uh, outstanding and how many millions of, of acres, perhaps, where there is natural gas and oil, where we can facilitate production of those sources on public lands. But we also know, as I stated, that we can't be taking energy sources off the table. And we have to be looking at where else, whether it's in the deep water gulf or other parts of the outer continental shelf, elsewhere on public lands where it can make sense, both economically and from an environmental perspective, to be able to extract those resources, particularly of natural gas, which has not posed the same types of environmental problems uh, in drilling on the OCS, although I think that technology, again, has brought us to a point that can minimize uh, those types of spills. The oil shale that we know exists in a number of states, whether it's in Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, and, of course, the other steps working with our trading partners and allies to our north in Canada as it relates to a natural gas pipeline, as it relates to oil pipelines that are being sited and under construction across South Dakota uh, to be able to get more of oil into the Midwest where we oftentimes are at a disadvantage in being at the end of the line. So I think that it's important tonight that we focus on not only what we've already done, but what more we are prepared to do to enhance the diversity of fuels, to enhance the diversity of options, both in the transportation sector and the electricity sector, to make us less dependent on foreign oil, to create jobs, to enhance technologies that create the jobs for the future, for the young men and women that are looking into careers in science, in environmental engineering, in mechanical engineering, and a whole host of opportunities it affords to every region of the country. If we take the steps that we need to take, reevaluate those long-held positions, look at information with a fresh look and glance, and be willing to uh, take some risks, because that's what it's going to require to do right by our constituents. And I thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the gentleman for yielding. Well, I want to thank my colleague from South Dakota, uh, who is always a very substantive uh, participant in any public policy discussion we have here in Congress. And I know she has invested a lot of time and effort uh, when it comes to the energy issue. And I really appreciate her participating in, in this Blue Dog discussion. And I, there are a couple of points that were raised by my colleague from South Dakota that I think uh, merit uh, one more mention. Um, the, the, the discussion of what we have done in this Congress, there have been some actions that have been taken, and one of them is going to bear fruit in the long run. You're not going to see a result right now. As a process